Welcome to the Film School. I'm Joe. I'm Chris. And uh, tonight we're actually going to talk about a couple movies uh, that Chris and I both saw over the weekend but didn't see together. Both kind of a toy theme. I saw Toy Story 4. And I saw Child's Play. And we're going to have a kind of slightly spoilered review of these things. Uh, Who wants to go first? You want to talk about Child's Play? Sure. So, yeah. New Child's Play. Wasn't too... Wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. You know, I don't know. They uh, they kind of went on the whole AI theme, which I thought was kind of lame because uh, the original, the original. I mean, you know, Charles Lee Ray, played by Brad Dourif, yeah. you know, his character puts the soul in the doll. Where in the new Child's Play, it's all AI and what? you just yeah, it's all you get a disgruntled employee in Taiwan that decides to change the program. Wow. Put it in the okay. box, and then he kills himself. It's just like I thought it was kind of a weak, uh, a weak <laughs> premise there. Like I don't know. I was like, oh yeah, let's just hurry and throw that in real quick. So <laughs> just uh, it just didn't work for me. You know, I mean, Mark Hamill actually voices Chucky in this, which I you know, I mean, he was good. But, why not Brad Dorf? Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why they just didn't bring Brad Dorf back for yeah. him. Cause, He's done it for seven other movies. You know, again, like, the death scenes in this I thought were a little bit more sinister than the original Child's Play, which I thought they were pretty cool. Any in particular that stuck out? Yeah, there's a scene where a guy gets his face ripped off by a, a tiller. Really? Yeah. That yeah, was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Sweet. That I'll see. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. The whole AI thing, I, I, I don't know. Is it like they're trying to like catch up with the times now because everything's all... Probably. You know, everybody's on their phones. Everything's Bluetooth now. Well, do just, kids even play with toys after like three or four? As soon as they get a cell phone anymore, they don't even play with toys, do they? Right, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, Audrey Plaza, yeah, she kind of was just looking for a paycheck, I think. But She's just Audrey <laughs> Plaza in this movie. Right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the director Lars Klevberg, I guess, I guess he's new. He's yeah, I'm first, not familiar with him. I'm not, but it was shot by a guy named Brian Yagama, I think. But he mostly shot like the the Van Helsing TV series on FX. Oh, okay, so he came from TV. Yeah. Who did the score? Anybody? Uh, good. Uh, Bear Bear McCready. Bear McCready. Okay. Good, like, like the Walking Bear Dead. And, and Godzilla. He also did the Cloverfield Paradox, and he's done a lot, you know, Arrow and the Flash yeah. and stuff like that. So, but uh, I like Bear McCready. But uh, Mark Hamill actually sings the, the theme song at the end, which I thought was kind of funny. Really? Yeah. That's cool. The Chucky theme song, which I thought was pretty cool. They had a killer. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> marketing ploy. But uh, you know, it was released by Orion Pictures. Man, they haven't been around. For a long time. A long this isn't their first movie, though. They've been back for maybe a year now, a yeah, year or two. It's kind of funny. They they uh, had a little uh, RoboCop thing in there. There was like a little toy police car. And it really? Says, OCP? Or? It was just a police car, and it says something like, uh, Dead or Alive, you're coming with me. And I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> like Going back to the old original RoboCop, yeah. which was released by Orion. Orion so. By the way, did, did they have the... <laughs> classic Orion logo where the stars the constellation yep. forms the O yep. is it updated or is it like no, OG it's, it's oh, OG it's awesome I always loved that logo <laughs> it's before like like Beach Street because as soon as it would this first time I noticed it, it was as soon as it forms the O the Beach Street theme kicks off by Grandmaster Flash it's so good you know and in, in this one I don't Chucky's actually trying to kind of protect Andy at the beginning which I thought was kind of Lame, like really, yeah, like so. I mean, but he then, but then you know, Andy go of course at the end, like saves the day or whatever. And so, Chucky, you know, wants to kill Andy at the end, but it's just at the beginning, it was like protecting Andy. I don't know, it was, just, it was bizarre. Just, That's weird. Yeah, so let me get this straight because I, I don't fully. So, these are like animatronic, like remote controlled dolls or whatever that a disgruntled pro. Yeah, like the the industry that makes them is called Caslin Industries, and like of course Tim Tim Matheson's like the oh CEO no or way and he's, wow he's, he's only in it for you know scenes where he's yeah but I haven't seen Tim Matheson yeah, forever he was the voice of Johnny Quest by the way but uh, 
I'm like, yeah, Caslin Industries, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, computer right. stuff. Like, there's a scene where, I guess it's like, they got cars that like taxis, but there's no driver. And there's like a scene where, of course, Chucky gets into the computer and hacks kills it. Yeah, hacks this lady, the car, and makes wow. it. Wow. I don't know. Like I said, certain things I liked about it, certain things I didn't. But like, I, I thought the Brad Dourif Chucky, you know, at least, at least he was like, you know, kind of a smart ass. Right. He, we're. The Mark Hamill one just was kind of just, well, I'm a robot, so I gotta act like a robot. I don't know. It just. So it just here's here's the big question though, what did you think of the way Chucky looked? Uh, I thought he looked lame. It just, yeah. I don't like the redesign either. I'm at like, all. That's, that's not yeah. Chucky. Mm-hmm. I see. I probably won't see it until I can but, stream it or whatever. You know, I give it a, I give it two, I'll give it two out of four. You know. To be honest with you, I'd probably wait till you know it's on digital download or <laughs> streaming. But you know, so the only way you would probably own it is if like Scream or Shout or Arrow or something released a box set with all the movies and right. like, the whole franchise. Yeah, it's the only it's the only way I own the Rob Zombie Halloween movies because otherwise I wouldn't have given money for those. So, but you know, let me know what you think. Subscribe. Yeah, when when I see it, we'll have a discussion. I just it's going to be a few months because I'm going to wait. But no, I I would definitely wait <laughs> for sure. But you know, I on the other hand uh, had a different experience with Toy Story Four, a less malevolent and more benign animated film, the fourth film and possibly the final film in the Toy Story franchise. It's been going on since '95. Kicked off the Pixar Mega Studio, and they're part of their never-ending sh- streak of of hits. Uh, and I think it, it, while the marketing campaign for Child's Play is really clever, I think the opposite happened at the box office. I think they're roasting Chucky's parts over an open <laughs> fire. Actually, they'd probably be like, we're your friends. Give them hugs. But I got to tell you, I was not disappointed by this movie. It answered some questions, though, from Toy Story 3. It's a separate film. It's its own standalone movie. But Bo Peep wasn't in the third Toy Story movie, and this kind of explains why. Uh, she goes out and becomes, by the way, spoilers. Uh, but I think I mentioned that already. But she goes out and basically becomes a lost, a lost toy, which plays in a lot of the elements that they've been building up throughout this entire series with Woody, his fear of becoming a lost toy, his fear of uh, losing Andy and, and going to another owner. And at the end of Toy Story 3 with the big emotional finale, Andy gives the kid the toys to this young girl named, this child named Bonnie. And it's basically now Bonnie's a couple of years older, and she's getting ready to go to um, kindergarten, and um, it's terrifying for her. And Woody's kind of feeling left out because she's kind of left him in the closet with some of the other abandoned toys, voiced by Mel Brooks, uh, uh, Carol Burnett, and um, Carl Reiner, which I thought was awesome. But uh, basically, um, Woody helps Bonnie in her first day of kindergarten, uh, without her knowing it, of course, where she creates a new toy, uh, voiced by Alan uh, Hale or um, Tony Hale. Sorry, I was thinking Alan Hale from Killigan's Island. Tony Hale from Arrested Development and Veep, and Stranger uh, Than Fiction, who plays Forky, who's one of my new favorite characters. Technically, he's a spork, but he's so flippin' cute it doesn't matter. This movie is all sorts of feel goodery. It's it's it's. I think the Toy Story films are actually a perfect franchise. There's not one that I don't like. I think each one builds on the next. The animation just gets better. Uh, there was a lot of photorealism in this film with the backgrounds, the streets, the cars, the RVs, the, the fairgrounds, the park, the buildings. It just looked fantastic. There were shots where I forgot I was watching a computer animated movie. Um, but it's just one of those movies that tickles me to death because I just think they do such a good job with the animation and building these characters bringing them to life that like um they they just they just make me laugh you know yeah Keanu Reeves in there is Duke Kaboom the Canada's world's greatest stuntman and he is so awesome in this movie keeping up his streak of awesomeness lately uh he even gets to do his classic whoa which made me super happy of course and then, you, uh, you gotta have that in gotta there. have that in there <laughs> Uh, Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peele, uh, Key and Peele, they play uh, Ducky and or Bunny and Duck, 
and they are awesome. This is the first time these two have worked together since Keanu, which came out in 2015 or 16. So it was cool to see them back together. And I think if they do make a, a new series, of course, those characters or another film, those characters should be in there. But I think they're actually on Disney Plus, they're doing a couple of um, streaming, uh, short streaming series based around this movie. There's one about Bo Peep and her time after Andy's sister gets gives her away and her time being a lost toy. And then they're going to have um, Ducky and, or Bunny and Duck in a series of these things too. Nice. And they do steal the show. But I got to tell you, Tony Hale as Forky just made this movie for me. It's They get into some really interesting existential stuff in this movie that you're like, really only adults are going to grasp man but i thought it was a, it was it was really a heartwarming and fun and funny movie kind of like they did in up yeah yeah in a lot of ways it hits that emotional level i mean not me of course because i'm a manly man and uh, as we all know boys don't cry so i didn't cry but i'm going to tell you most of the audience cried at two points in this movie you could hear sniffling, and you could hear kids going, no! And even the person that came and saw the movie with me got all misty with the sniffles and the tears and the Niagara Falls and the wet works. And, I mean, I understand that. I just... They did it to me the last time. I wasn't going to let them do it to me this time. <laughs> but it was such a good movie. I am going to give it a full four out of four stars. Possibly the best film I think we reviewed since... Um, earlier this year you know like keeping on that streak of how the year started off strong avengers. with us and avengers and captain marvel and shazam and, and uh um so did this one green book did this one have like a big emotional impact like toy story 3 or yeah it did and it uh, changes everything really uh tim allen uh, uh without giving away too much i mean what he kind of leaves the fold and goes on his own with bo peep in this movie and so the final scenes where everyone's kind of saying their goodbyes wasn't as drawn out as Andy giving away his toys. That did kind of get to me because, you know, it kicks you in the emotions, but then you're like, okay, this is going on a little too long to get that emotional sentimentality out of you. A little manipulative on your part, Pixar, but not enough to take away from the movie. They, they didn't do that with this film, but Tim Allen uh, stated that he weeped while he was reading the script. You know, because for them, it is kind of a farewell after working together, you know, on these movies since 1995. Right. It's kind of a farewell. You all right over there, buddy? You want me to come over and punch oh, you? I'm fine. <laughs> God damn it, LJ. Ah, quiet, Peter Gallagher. Not my fault. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it really, if it is the final film in the series, it's a perfect way to end it. But they introduce so many interesting characters I don't want it to end. I don't think anybody who likes the Toy Story movies want it to end. I'm, you know, I was I was uh, no, 19 when the first movie came out and fell in love with it. And I think even then I was probably a little too old to enjoy those movies. But that's the, the thing with the Toy Story movies is I think they're written at a level that you can be a child and enjoy it. But you could also be in your 70s and enjoy this movie. Right. You know? Uh, they got Estelle Harris in there as Mrs. Potato Head. Don Rickles, unfortunately, had passed away in 2017 before he'd had a chance to record. However, he had been contra uh, contracted for the film. Uh, so apparently his uh, estate, his family, reached out to Pixar and said, you have the right to use whatever you need you know, from his career to, oh, to, nice. to put him in the film. That's cool. Because he loved playing Mr. Potato Head. And we all love Mr. Potato Head. And uh, so what they did is they actually culled some some unused dialogue from the first three movies mixed with actual, like, he doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue in the movie. It's the le least he's ever had. But they had to give him some lines, right? So it's like unused dialogue from the other three movies, I think mixed with some even earlier dialogue from other stuff. Uh, but it flows seamlessly. Uh, of course, Timothy Dalton is back as Mr. Pickle Pants. My favorite name of any toy in the franchise. Like... <laughs> Oh, I think if I ever get another pet, dog, cat, doesn't matter, goldfish, I'm going to name him Mr. Pickle Pants. Because that's just the cutest thing ever, right? How do you not get happy saying that? Mr. Pickle Pants. Um, Carl Weathers was back, and I forget his character's name, but they're like G.I. Joe characters. Like, they're three and three quarter inches. They have the same articulation. And one of them looked like Alpine, who was one of my favorite Joes from the old series. And there were three of them. And it's, this is the subtlety of their humor. It's so clever. 
the first two Carl Weather G.I. Joe type guys are high fiving everybody, and the, the one that looks like Alpine, he always goes to do it, and everyone ignores him, and he just it's really sad and walks away. And you're like, that's adorable. There's nothing. Leave him hanging. He's letting every Woody left him hanging. Duke Kaboom left him hanging. Or no, Bo Peep left him hanging. Like, there is absolutely nothing to not enjoy about this movie. And oddly enough, there are some some jolting moments. It's there's if there is any villains in this film, there are um, ventrilo- ventriloquist dummies, and we all know how creepy they can be. And they definitely play on that angle, and there's a few jump scares in there too that got the yeah. audience. Has anybody seen Magic with Anthony Hopkins? Exactly, <laughs> or the original Dead of Night, the nineteen what nineteen forties horror film from right. wasn't that Todd Browning? Yeah, also he, did um, Freaks, Freaks and Dracula. Yeah. So we all know ventriloquist dummies are frightening as shit, and they they use that really well in this movie, and they got people to jump. Not me. I'm a pro at horror movies, but everybody else. That's right. I'm an emotional. Ro- I'm an emotionless robot. I didn't cry and I didn't get scared, but I laughed a lot. Oh, this movie was so good. I actually think I want to see it again on the big screen. I highly recommend seeing it on the big screen. Just if anything, to just take in the beautiful animation and the characterizations. But um, even though there's action and adventure and a few thrills in this movie, they really did focus on the characters and just. Good job, Pixar. If this is the final Toy Story movie, then thank you for, you know, uh, uh, 20 plus years of awesome entertainment. I think this will go down as as, as, uh, one of the best films of the year. And I hope it gets nominated for Best Animated Movie this year. Um, Well, yeah, you definitely can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with Toy Story. (laughs) And it's about the only time, I think, Toy Story and The Naked Gun are about the only time I don't get annoyed with Randy Newman. So... You got a friend in me. Yeah, let's 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 not get. <laughs> it doesn't bother me, man. Come on, what about I Love L.A. from from Naked Gun? How can you not? When you're watching that movie, not love that song in that montage. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm gonna give it four stars, and I highly recommend seeing it. And to recap, with Child's Play, yeah, I would just wait till it comes out on the physical media. And there you have it. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Reach like out. And subscribe. Okay. And yes, absolutely what he said. So thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you on the next review. We got some good ones coming up. I wonder if Disney could sue them over this marketing campaign.